If you've upgraded to disc brakes from rim brakes, you may well be a bit confused when it comes to all of the different options out there for replacing your disc brake pads. So in this video, I'll give you a quick run through of all the different options out there to help you pick what's best for you. Like every component of our bikes, there are a whole host of different options to choose from when it comes to choosing a brake pad, each with a different fit and performance characteristics. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is establish what shape the brake pad needs to be because different calipers, different brands and different manufacturers will require a different size and different shape of this metal backing plate. So this is quite simply the, uh, the part that the friction material is added onto. So once you get that, you'll know which type of brake pad you need. To establish that, you can just quite simply look on the calipers of your bike. They'll have a code written on them and then you can look that code up online and you'll be able to find out what style of brake pad you need. If you're not sure, you could just head down to your local bike shop or you could take the brake pad out yourself and then compare it to different options that are available. And hopefully you'll pick the right one. Once you have the model or the shape of the brake pad sorted, you know which to choose from. The next step is that some brands will have the option to choose a brake pad with or without cooling fins such as this. These are designed to help dissipate the heat that builds up under heavy braking. And whilst it's not crucial to have these, it's a good idea. So if the option's there for the brake pads you're looking at, then you might as well choose it because it's only gonna help keep the brakes running nice and cool, and they're just gonna work that little bit better. Once you've decided on the disc brake pad model, the type you have, and whether you're gonna opt for the cooling fins or not, comes your next choice, and that's to decide what compound brake material you're gonna have. So the friction or brake material is this part here, which is bonded onto the back of the metal plate. And this is the part which contacts the rotor as you apply the brakes and does all of the hard work helping to slow your bike down. The first option to choose from is resin, or it's sometimes referred to as organic or non-metallic. These are made up from non-metallic compounds such as rubber, glass, Kevlar, and even carbon fiber. Resin pads are typically what's fitted to new bikes as they come out of the factory. They offer fairly low noise, they're nice and quiet under braking, and they're not too abrasive, so they're not gonna wear down your disc rotors excessively quickly. Although they're not particularly suited to high temperatures or very harsh conditions, so they will wear down a little bit quicker than some of the options that we're gonna talk about next. With the next option being metallic or sintered brake pads. Now, as the name suggests, these are made up from metallic components, such as copper, steel, and iron. And they're particularly suited to high temperatures or harsh conditions, such as those you'll experience on a tough winter ride or a long alpine descent. And while their initial brake bite isn't quite as good as that as a resin pad, they will last much longer. But that said, they'll also wear down your disc brake rotors a little bit quicker too, and you'll likely find that they're a little bit noisier than those resin pads. Finally, we have semi-metallic. So this is a combination of the resin pad and the metallic pad. And as such, it has the advantages from both systems, but it also carries across some of the disadvantages as well, because it's not quite as simple as just having all of the good stuff. And as such, these will wear out a little bit faster than a normal metallic pad, and they'll be a little bit noisier than a resin pad. So it's a bit of a balancing act, really. So how do you choose which brake pad is right for you? Well, you take all the handy information I've just given you, and then you look at all of the different performance characteristics of the three different compounds, and then decide which suits your riding style and preferences the most. So in the past, I would have always chosen a metallic brake pad, because I thought that was great and it lasted a lot longer than some of the different ones. But more recently, I've switched back to a resin pad because of the improvements that have been made to them to make them last that little bit longer, and I also enjoy the fact that the brakes a little bit quieter as well. I hope you really enjoyed this disc brake pad explainer, and I'm keen to know what type of brake pads you choose to run on your bike, so let me know in the comments section down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, well consider subscribing to GCN Tech and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release more videos. Well, I'll see you next week.